Get ready to rock and roll with a classic film from 1957. It's all about Jailhouse Rock, starring Elvis Presley, one of his most memorable roles. The story follows Vince Everett, a young guy who ends up in jail, but discovers his talent for singing and dancing while there. As you watch, think about which character you like the most. Share your thoughts below. What's your favorite memory of this movie? Let us know. Get your snacks ready and enjoy the show. In the late 1950s, a movie hit the screens that captivated audiences with its portrayal of a young man's journey from prison to stardom. It tells the story of Vince Everett, who finds himself behind bars after a tragic incident. In prison, he discovers his musical talent, catching the eye of a record company executive. Upon his release, he dives into the music industry, facing its challenges and temptations. Alongside Vince are characters like Peggy, a supporter of his talent, and Hunk, a friend from prison who aids him along the way. The movie received praise for its memorable musical performances, including the famous title song. It left a lasting mark on culture, inspiring many in the music and film industries. In a scene during the recording session of Treat Me Nice, an unidentified man is seen clapping his hands to the beat next to Peggy Van Alden without any reference made to him. Originally, choreographer Alex Romero designed a dance for the song Jailhouse Rock that didn't align with Elvis Presley's style. Realizing his plans wouldn't work, Romero asked Presley how he would move to the song, leading Presley to become the uncredited choreographer for the famous dance number. Nearly five decades after its release, Jailhouse Rock was inducted into the Library of Congress National Film Registry in December 2004 for its cultural and historical significance, long after Presley and co-star Judy Tyler had passed away. In the realm of entertainment history, an unforgettable collaboration unfolded between two remarkable talents. As they worked together, the dance moves for the film were honed to perfection. The movie itself became a timeless favorite showcasing the incredible abilities of its stars. Their partnership, rooted in friendship and shared passion, brought magic to the screen. The performances, meticulously crafted and practiced, continue to captivate audiences today, a testament to their dedication. This narrative of artistic synergy highlights the resilience and talent of those involved, underscoring the lasting influence of their work. Elvis Presley ranked two on VH1's 100 Sexiest Artists and eight on VH1's 100 Greatest Artists of Rock and Roll, was voted the best singer of all time by Q Magazine and the third greatest rock and roll artist of all time by Rolling Stone Magazine. The film features an average shot length of 3-4 seconds and a median shot length of 14-1 seconds. Judy Tyler, who starred opposite him, tragically died in a car crash shortly after filming concluded in Los Angeles. She was traveling with her husband when the accident occurred on Highway 30 in Wyoming. A tragic incident marked the completion of the film, as Judy Tyler, one of the lead actors, met her demise in a car accident in Wyoming merely three days after wrapping up production. Despite this somber event, the movie premiered later that year in November. Featuring Elvis Presley, it became the first of his films to earn a spot in the Library of Congress National Film Registry. In a notable aspect of authenticity, Presley's band in the film was his actual band, which included Scotty Moore on electric guitar and Bill Black on stand-up bass. The recording studio scenes also featured the real deal with Mike Stoller of The Lever and Stoller songwriting duo on piano, who were behind many iconic rock hits of the era. Infatuated with her co-star, Elvis Presley found filming difficult after Judy Tyler's death. He couldn't watch the film due to his grief. Jerry Labor and Mike Stoller, under pressure, penned four songs in five hours, including the iconic Jailhouse Rock, I Wanna Be Free, Treat Me Nice, and You're So Square. Elvis Presley's achievements include induction into both the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and the Country Music Hall of Fame, alongside Johnny Cash and Hank Williams. In the movie, Vince Everett and Peggy Van Alden meet at the Florida nightclub. Elvis Presley, known for his music, had several one-country hits, including Way Down in 1977. During filming, he accidentally swallowed a tooth cap, leading to hospitalization. Elvis had numerous one-hits on both the country and Hot 100 charts between 1956 and 1981. His songs like Hound Dog Don't Be Cruel and Jailhouse Rock topped the charts. These incidents highlight Elvis's career and the challenges he faced. 
Decades later, a memorable sequence in a classic film paid tribute to a famous dance move, reminiscent of a captivating performance by a talented actress. In her final appearance on screen, she left a lasting impression. The film not only showcased her exceptional talent, but also sparked discussions with a daring comment on a character's appearance, pushing the boundaries of its time. Another character offered a milder remark, still carrying a hint of suggestion. The contrast between these characters added depth to the story, making it a timeless favorite. As the credits rolled, it became clear that the actress's contribution to the industry went beyond that scene, leaving a lasting legacy. The echoes of her performance reverberated through the years, influencing future filmmakers and performers. The dance moves, daring dialogue, and overall charisma of the film continue to captivate audiences, making it a cinematic masterpiece. Truly, the actress's impact on film, as seen in this movie, remains a tribute to the enduring power of artistic expression. The movie seems to predict the future of its main character in a surprising way. When you watch it again after his death, you notice how similar the movie's events are to what actually happened in his life. It's like the writers had some kind of special insight into his fate. Some scenes and details in the movie match up with other movies he starred in, which makes you think about how fiction and reality connect. The connections between the story and real life make you wonder if there's some kind of hidden meaning behind it all. It's fascinating how a movie made decades ago can still make us think about fate and how stories can reflect real life. This shows the power of movies to capture the complexities of life. Riding high on the American Film Institute's list of 100 years, 100 songs at the 21st spot, Jailhouse Rock continues to be a hit. The scene in the movie set in prison served as inspiration for Johnny Cash's memorable performances at Folsom Prison and San Quentin. When Elvis Presley was asked to get a prison-style haircut for the film, he was initially okay with it. However, due to protests from fans who loved his usual hairstyle, he ended up wearing a wig in the final scenes. In the world of music and movies, there's a timeless classic that stands out for its groundbreaking approach. Back in 1957, a particular musical video changed the game, introducing a new way to blend music and storytelling seamlessly. This iconic creation featured memorable scenes, including one where a character embraces another at a lawn party, triggering the start of a familiar tune. The song, All I Do Is Dream Of You, originally from Sadie McKee, took on a new life as it accompanied this pivotal moment in the story. Interestingly, the melody found its way into television commercials for Bell Canada during the mid-1970s, showing how its appeal transcended time and mediums. The impact of this movie, both in its pioneering musical video and its enduring melodies, can't be overstated. It earned its place in the American Film Institute's esteemed list of top 100 America's greatest music in the movies, highlighting its significance in American entertainment history. Decades later, the movie and its tunes continue to captivate audiences, showcasing the lasting influence of its creative vision. From the iconic scenes to the unforgettable music, it's a testament to the power of innovation in storytelling and its ability to resonate across generations. In a significant cinematic milestone, Elvis Presley's film, now recognized in the National Film Registry by the Library of Congress, stands out as a culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant piece. Within this movie, subtlety intertwines with the familiar, as the swank apartment designated for Elvis was a repurposed set, formerly belonging to Lauren Buckhall in Designing Woman. Noteworthy is the recording session of Don't Leave Me Now, where the studio walls were adorned with portraits of fellow RCA artists, featuring the likes of the Ames brothers, J.P. Morgan, Eddie Fisher, Dinah Shore, Tony Martin, Lena Horn, Harry Belafonte, and Hugo Winterhalter. The musical canvas was painted by studio session musicians such as bassist Bill Black, drummer DJ Fontana, pianist Mike Stoller, and guitarist Scotty Moore. Throughout the film, Elvis Presley renders this particular song three times, creating a resonating chord within the movie's narrative. 